Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do an after-action report of Don't Look Back by Black Sight Studios. So let's get started. It's been a while since we've covered Don't Look Back here on Cry Havoc Wargaming, and I think in nature of this month and the holiday of this month that we will give Don't Look Back a little bit of attention throughout the month. So we're going to start uh, just now with a scenario out of the basic book, Well in the Woods. Let's go to the gaming table. This is Well in the Woods, Scenario 5 out of the original book. Inspiration is Investigate and Banish. The table is supposed to be set up as a wilderness area, but it already set it up to be Camp Northwood because I'm very fond of my Camp Northwood terrain and haven't used, uh, haven't played Don't Look Back in about a year. So I thought I'd like to use all of that stuff and, and show it to you here. So that's what we did. Uh, I set up the table, then I rolled for the scenario. The table consists of a well, a mysterious well, centered right there in the middle. That's the midnight well. It's in the... It's placed wrong. So the midnight well is in the middle of table section A. It is just over here in that corner. All the figures are set up around it. The figures that we have, we're using Father Gabriel for the first time, Chisaki, who's a favorite, Alice Grace, and Max the Abs. These have all been chosen randomly. There are three fright tokens that begin at the center of the table, just here. There are three point of interest tokens from the corners of section B, C, B, C, and D. Those are the items that have to be taken, this ritual components. When a character successfully investigates a point of interest token, there are negative two awareness for this game, this particular scenario to do that. But they will take that marker, it represents a ritual item that has to be thrown into the well. If the character carrying that item falls victim, the marker will be left where the character falls. Any character moving into base to base with the ritual item, marker picks it up for free. There are no lights starting on the table. Objectives need to finish the ritual and stop the well curse by successfully investigating all three points of interest tokens and carrying them back to base and base contact with the well before the end 12. Special rules include overflow of evil starting on turn two and for the rest of the game, at the start of the fright phase, a fright token will appear at the center of section A coming out of the well. Help is on the way. Players may add a supporting character to the center of the table on turn eight, and one step closer. When a character successfully investigates a point of interest, they may remove a point of terror from themselves. We're gonna go ahead and begin turn one. Oh, I should also probably mention that we're going to do the random killer when the killer shows up. I may fudge that a little if it turns out being something that doesn't really make sense, because this should be a curse sort of thing. So the next thing we do is we roll for the Fright Token, see if there's any activation of them. We start this by rolling a d10, and this is something that will get worse as the game goes. On the first turn, they only activate on a roll of 10. So we're gonna go ahead and roll, and I get a six. So the Fright Tokens do not activate Anytime that they do not activate, we get a free token, fright token that shows up, and that's going to be in the center of the table. A killer phase, character phase. So each character is going to get two, either two quick actions or one quick action and one long action. Do you want to split up? I think I'm going to activate Chisaki first. And she's going to do two moves through here. We're going to go ahead and do a jump scare for Chisaki. 
because she's within two inches of these trees, which I'm going to call a two. Eerie sounds. Character makes an awareness test on a fail to test the character trips. Shisaki's awareness is 10, so she has to be a 10. She rolled a 7, so she uh, does not trip. What are we going to do now? We're going to do Alice or Max. Alice has a move of 5. She can also do encourage, but I don't think there's a point in that right now. We're going to go ahead and move her, her 2, too quick to here. Max is going to go ahead and move. Come on down this way. Not Max, so uh, Father Gabriel. I th I'm going to move Max, I think, kind of slowly. I'll send him with Alice, actually, because Alice isn't the fighter that Shisaki is. So that's going to be the end of the character phase. And we go to turn two. Now this is the overflowing of evil. First thing that's going to happen is a fright token is going to show up. Again, we roll a d10 to find out if anything is activated. Four. This time we had needed a six or higher, so we did not get that. If fright tokens do not activate, that does cause a new one to appear. We don't have killers or any of that yet, so we'll go right ahead to our phases. I'm going to go ahead and move Chisaki. She's going to have to roll again for that jump scare because she's activating within two inches of it. This is a jump scare. We roll a d10. Two. Same thing as last time, so, so she gets to move her eight inches. We call the water rough ground. Uh, and now she has to roll. And she trips. So she's right right here. Just barely entered the water and she trips. She's trying to get to that. Uh, we'll go ahead and move Alice next. Alice is going to have a jump scare as well. Alice just flies though. So Alice is going to make it all the way to here. Almost there, but she does have a jump scare when she crosses through there. So we'll roll a d10 for that. That's an eight. Strange Shadow, the character gains a terror point. The first terror point of the game has been gained, and it is Alice de Gross. She has a total fright of four. I'm gonna go ahead and move Max, as I agreed earlier, to go after her. Uh, he's gonna have a jump scare. Five. Tap on the shoulder. Place the closest friendly character supporting character within eight inches into base to base character with that. Um, so that's going to be, I think, it's, I think it's 51. Yeah, there's a fit. It's Gabriel. Does not cause jump scare for the place character. If there are no characters within eight inch, gains a one terror instead. So that worked out okay. Also kind of helped uh, uh, our father. Now he's going he's gonna to move his six. He's also going to cause his own jump scare now, crossing through that. Five. Uh, tap on the shoulder. It's going to bring Max to there. That's not what Max wanted. And we go to turn three. So a new fright token appears. So we're going to roll again. We have uh, Alice is over here approaching an area of interest. Uh, Max and Father Gabriel are there working towards this corner's this interest. And up there is Chisaki, who is tripped in the water on our way to that point of interest right there. And what we're going to do first is we're going to roll building tension. This is now turn three, so a five or more will cause an issue. Still no. Still not making fright tokens. So that means another fright token appears in the center of the table, but they do not move. I will do Alice first. Alice is within her move. So she can get there. She can do her investigate for the first relic. What she's going to have to do is make an awareness roll. She's at a negative two. Her awareness is normally 12. So she's going to need 10 or under. And she gets it. So the first token has been picked up by Alice. Oh, and she 
also gets to remove a terror that she, that terror she gained because it, she's taken that point. I'm going to move Father Gabriel, I think, over to here. I think I may change my actions with Max, but I'm going to go ahead and keep right now keep Max with the old guy. Um, just for safety reasons. So he does have to roll a jump scare, though. So he gets an eight. Strange shadow. The character gains a terror point. Max is thinking he's saying things now. Terror's pretty light in this game so far. And that leaves us with Chisaki. Ch Chisaki is going to have to stand. Remember, she fell. So she's going to have to stand, and then she's only going to get to walk the four. And so we go to turn four. We go into turn four. A four or higher on the D10 will cause problems. And we got a one. I'm running out of freight tokens. I've never run out of freight tokens in this game before. Nothing to activate then on that score. Uh, we'll go ahead and start getting Alice. Alice is just gonna go back to the well. Um, so she's gonna come out to this fire here. She is going to get a jump scare for going by those trees. Oops, I should have rolled in front of the camera, but I get a five. Five is a tap on the shoulder. The closest friendly character gets brought to her. I'm going to go ahead and make it... Well, what do I do? I'm going to make it Max, I guess. That makes sense, because Max would be worried about the woman, and also he moves quicker than Gabriel. Uh, on the other hand, He's just going to have to activate to go, well, let's move Gabriel first. Uh, I'm going to move Gabriel first in case Max starts, causes a uh, jump scare. And Max is going to try to get back to Father Gabriel. Everything was okay with, uh, but he does have to roll again for the uh, jump scare, crossing those bushes. He gets a six. Tap on the shoulder, closest to him. Uh, uh, uh. And Gabriel's right back. They are not getting anywhere. Chisaki's gonna move up to here. Investigates are long actions. That's a tricky thing to remember in this game is it's not two actions like any other game. It's two quick or one quick and a long and those are supposed to be done in that action. So we're actually okay because the quick, the move was a quick. So the long is the investigate and she can do it within two inches. So she can investigate from there. Uh, she's gonna need an eight or lower, however. She got it. So she, Shisaki, has one of the relics and would have been able to take off a fright. I'm assuming it's her own, I'm not really sure. We're gonna, I could have looked that up, but I'm gonna leave it alone right now. And we go to turn five. Uh, but now it's turn five, so a three or higher will cause them to activate. Uh, still a one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate Gabriel. Gabriel only moves for the six, so he's going to move to the front of the car. I'll go ahead and move. Should I move Shisaki back or should I move? Yeah, I'm going to move Shisaki back. So we did say she was in the. I can only move her four. In fact, I think I just cheated a moment ago. I'm calling the water to uh, dangerous ground or difficult ground, so she shouldn't have made. She moved too quick, too quickly a moment ago. I forgot about that. And then we'll roll for Alice. Um, she is starting within, so she can she can move forever. But she is going to get a jump scare when she crosses that, and that's a one. Oh, all right. One is lunge. Place the killer in base to base with the character and make an attack with attack two. So we now have a killer. So what we're going to do is roll to see what that killer is. Uh, I'm going to roll six. Six is lunge. Just when you take a moment to catch your breath, it appears out of nowhere. The quiet of the night's split with a chilling scream. We're going to roll for the, the, the visage. Eight. It is disjointed. Disjointed, it has wounds eight. If it's driven off, immediately replace the killer and follow its 
MO. Special actions, when a disjointed killer moves, all characters in line of sight gain one terror point due to the awkward way that it moves. Its attacks, first is shutter step, disjointed killers target the character in base to base with the most terror points. In the case of a tie, the players may choose. Place a fright token in base to base with the targeted character. Combat 14, damage one, injury, and one terror point. Two is unnatural crawl, disjointed killers move three inches directly away from the models in base to base. If there are no models in base to base, the disjointed killer moves three inches towards the closest character. We roll for traits, two traits. Three is unnaturally fast, and nine is menacing. Unnaturally fast and menacing. So this is really a shame. I have a new Windigo that would be absolutely perfect for this, uh, but I haven't assembled them yet. We'll use my old Windigo. He shows up, as mentioned, in base to base, and does a secondary attack. Secondary attack is just to move away. So. All right, so fright phase. So building tension, we're turn, five, uh, turn six, always roll for the fright tokens. All right, so they automatically are gonna activate. This time we do have to roll for uh, markers. Uh, I think the original markers are the farthest away. I think the ones on the well. We're gonna roll for the first one on the top there. These are D10 rolls. Uh, the first one is an eight. Uh, move the token six inches towards the closest character. So that's moving towards Atlas. The second one, we get a 10. Immediately conjure the killer, unless you're using the scenario specific killer, and replace the fright token with the killer's model. Once placed, move the killer using its target rolls under its MO. So the killer does disappear, and it shows up on the well. I'm going to go over and take a look at its MO again. The MO, place the killer so that it is six inches away from the most characters possible, and without any terrain in between if possible. When the killer moves, it targets the character with the most terror points. So it's going to be placed within six inches of these guys. So it's going to show up over here, and one of those tokens goes away. We're going to roll the result for the next one. One, that, that removes and lights would flicker if we had any. The next one, five. Move the token six inches towards the closest character, that's there. The next one is a three, that's a remove. The next one is a six, move towards six. And the last of those is a five, and that's also six. I do those ones in the center of the table, that huge stack. First one is a three, that goes away. The second one is a six, six inches toward closest character. Uh, okay, that's going to affect her. The next one is a 5, 6 inches towards the closest character. Next one is a 4. Oh boy. 4. She's in trouble. 9. Uh, that would have conjured the killer. So I have to roll a D2, D10, and if it is equal to or less than his... Uh, his points, he'll be enraged. And it is, so he's enraged. So that's what this token's really for. So the Windigo is enraged. All for the next one. Oh, that should have gone. Four, move six inches. And the last one, six. Oh, oh boy. All right, now it is the killer's turn. The killer targets the character with the most terror points. Father Gabriel and Max are who he's looking at. It's going to be Max because Max has one. He's going to roll a d10 and add the one. It only moves two inches. That is not much of a move. The characters who watched 
get. So Father Gabriel gets a terror. And Max. Terror goes two. Just from watching him wander. But he does place a fright token in base contact. And it's gonna be it's gonna get both of them actually. And then he has a secondary, and then he moves three inches towards closest. That's the monster's move. I'm going to activate Father Gabriel first. Father Gabriel can attack with his holy sensor. That's a melee. That's a As a free action, he can remove a fright token within four inches. So I'm going to move the fright token. It just appeared here. That's gone. Attack with the holy sensor. His combat is 11. He's menacing, so I have to roll an awareness to even get the attack in. Awareness is 10. So I have to roll 10 or under first off. And I can't. So he cannot do his attack. I'm going to stumble away. I'm going to stumble away and then move behind the car. Max is going to hit. So Max has to make his awareness. It's 10. So that he is at negative 2. Oh, no problem though. That is way under. He gets a critical success on that. So he's not afraid of it. He comes in with his baseball bat. And he smacks him hard with that bat. Uh, his combat is 10. Baseball bat does 3 injuries. It would... It would be moved back if it had any damage, but it doesn't. Uh, so he has to do 10. Or he has to roll 10. 10. 3 is a hit. So he does 3 points of damage to the Windigo. Does Chisaki try to help? Uh, she doesn't even know it's an issue. So Chisaki's just going to move. Chisaki has no fear on her, does she? Then we're going to move. 6. Wow. Alice has got six on her. That takes her two over her fright. So she's going to have negatives to her attack. And her chances of falling are pretty high. She's going to get a jump scare for activating near the bush. Tap on the shoulder. Thanks to Father Gabriel over to her. That's probably not bad, except that he's going to get in trouble with that thing. She's going to go ahead and get... I'm going to go ahead and move her straight past those things over to here. Uh, she has to roll an awareness at six or higher, or six or under. Four. She is okay. But now, Gabriel has to activate. He's got seven. He can take one of those off. That's going to give him six. He's going to cause a jump scare. Three. Flickering lights, flick, uh, flick all the lights within, okay, no big deal. He's not getting out of here. I think he needs to move out. Um, and that's that, that's turn six done. So it's now turn seven. I'm gonna roll for each of the terror markers. I'm going to go ahead and move the ones in the middle first. The very first one on top gets a four. It's going to move the closest character. It's going to move right to Gabriel. This next one is a one that goes away. The next one is a two. That goes away. The next one is a seven. That's going to move to Gabriel. The next one is a ten. Conjure the killer unless you're using the scenario. Killer's already there. He's already enraged, so, but that does go away. And the next one goes away. Uh, the next one's eight. That's going to go towards the nearest character. That's Alice. The next one, nine. That goes away. Would have been enraged, but he's already enraged. 
Uh, the next one, 10, same thing. And the last one, 5. All right, I'm going to replace that with an actual terror marker. And that's what we said. Now we have the monster's turn. And he's already in base-to-base -base contact with a character looking at him. All right, so he's going to attack with his... Okay, put a terror marker on him. His combat is 14. Uh, damage is one injury, one terror. And that is a critical hit. Critical hit, and he, he's enraged, so it would have... That, that it rolled a one anyway. Two points of damage beyond its usual. So it's going to be three, in, three points of injury to max, and it raises his terror, uh, and then it can move three inches away. Uh, so that's the creature phase done. It is our turn. Shisaki's going to go first. Shisaki's way over here. She's going she's gonna to have to roll a jump scare. That's just flipping lights, no big deal. Uh, so she can go eight. She's going to go back towards that well. She's almost there. Alice is going to take. Alice is going to be gone at the end of this turn, or the beginning of next turn. If have to roll under eight or trip, though, um, I'm going to go ahead and try that. She's going to try to make it all the way to there, away from those. I have to roll a negative eight to her awareness roll. Normally even 12. So she needs a four under. <laughs> she trips, but she almost made it. On the other hand, the nice thing about trip is it still gets you where you're, it's at the end of your turn. So she makes it to the well, and then she trips. One of the items is actually there. Now Max is gonna activate, he gets another fright point just for activating. He's going to close with the critter. He needs to roll a 10 or under. He does. The bat does three injuries to the creature and it pushes it back two. We've actually come close to pushing it away. That's Max done. Father, Father Gabriel. Let us get rid of one of those, so we'll do that. Get rid of that one of those tokens. He is going to cause a jump scare. It's a one. That's a lunge. Place the killer on base to base with the character and make an attack with an attack of two. If the killer is already in base to base with the character or a supporting character. Place a fright token in base to base. Okay, but it isn't. It's on the table, but it is not. So it's going to be here. It's going to attack with a plus two. He should have been able to do his three inch move. Critter jumped out at him and he moved. No, lunge, he has to do his secondary skill, so that secondary skill is only move back three inches. We do concentrate. That's him done. That turn ends. We go to turn eight. When we check for problems, we're going to lose Alice. We lose her at least right smack at the face. Alice is gone. We do get the choice of a Supporting character that shows up in the middle of the table. I'm going to use Ranger Sandy as our supporter character because it just makes so much sense. This is Ranger Sandy, and she shows up. Probably came out of the cabin or something. So we roll for the markers. Furthest from anybody is probably are the ones over here by the ice chest there. So for the first one, nine. Uh, that would conjure the killer. He's already conjured. We roll. Uh, under his hits, we don't roll under his hits, so he's not enraged. One of those goes away. The next one is a four. Move it towards the closest character. Uh, towards Chisaki. Uh, the next one is the one over here, I think. It's hard to say. Oh, there's the ones, actually, the next one's the ones on the thing. That's a nine, so we can roll for enraged again. That is enraged. So the Windigo is enraged. That one goes away. And the next one is a three. That one goes away. That's good news for Jisaki. Uh, the one on Father Gabriel, on the other hand, that's a six. 
it's going to stay there, and the one on max is a 9. I can't enrage him twice, so that's where we stand. It is the killer's turn. The killer is going to attack the one with the most terror points. That's, who's that going to be? That's going to be Father Gabriel. So he gets to move uh, 10. He's fast. That's a plus 2, so that's 3. I missed that earlier, so it's 3 inches. And uh, it's 10 inches, so he can more than easily get there because of the uh, terror. He places another terror marker, and he attacks. He gets pluses to his uh, score for those terror. That's a 7, so he gets plus 7. Jeez. Uh, he has a 14 normally. This can't miss. It'll be miss if it's a 20. It, it's not. So, one injury and one terror. Oh, and he can move three inches away, which can get him out of the range of that sensor. So that's what he'll do. This goes away. I'm going to stay there. I'm going to use the, his ability, his free action, to get rid of one of these. So he only goes up to nine. I'm going to use a long action to take a breath, which will get rid of one of the terrors, bringing it back down to eight. That was wrong. He can't attack uh, Father Gregory. He has to... Because it's a supporting character, he has to attack towards the supporting character. All right, so now it would have been Father Gregory. He'll use his special thing to get rid of one of those. Uh, he goes up one because of the token that's still on him. So that's what we've done. He's taken a breath. Max is going to move. Max is going to move uh, his full... Or won't get him there. He's going to have to move. So he's okay. He gets there. He's going to swing that bat at a negative one. His combat is 10, so he needs nine or under. That's a hit. Critter's gone. Now that's driven off, and it is the nature of a disjointed. If he's driven off, when uh, the disjointed killers are driven off, immediately replace the killer and follow its M.O. So he's going to show up six inches away from the most characters possible and without any terrain in between a possible. So it's going to have to be here. So, However, that lowers terror for having driven him off and terror, dropping off terror is good. Saki may need to get her butt over here. We still haven't got the other element. Oh, we can't, I don't think we can achieve this. Chisaki can get over here and get that for free. Turn nine, overflowing evil. Another one of these shows up there. Uh, we roll for the movement of those things. First one, which is the furthest away? Probably this one. That's a nine. So that he has a chance of being enraged. He is not. But that goes away because of that. The one near Chisaki is a six that moves at Chisaki. So this takes us to the uh, hero's action. Have Chikasa drop the two things she was carrying. I'm going to activate Father Gabriel. Move him for three. He's going to move for three and take a breath. Max is going to move, and then he's going to hit the critter with his bat. His combat is 10. His terror presently is right at his port love, fright level, so he needs a 10 to hit it, and he misses. That's not good. And that is the end of turn 9. We go to turn 10. A new fright token appears on the well. And we have to roll, oh, I should have rolled for a jump scare, uh, for both of them actually. Four is a flickering light, that's not a big deal. And the other one is ten, screams in the distance, move all fright tokens, d10 towards. That might be helpful. There's two fright tokens, they move d10 towards him. Uh, that gets him away from everybody. That's a good move. That should have been on the jump scares from the end of turn nine. Uh, so now we're going to go to the fright tokens. We're going to just roll for what they do. We need a d10. 
first one, we're going to do the one here first, and that gets a six. Move token six inches towards closest character. That's not good. And then the other one, three, you hear that? That one removes. That is good. Creature's going to go. It's going to roll a d10. It's plus 12. It's going to get to Ranger Sandy. That's not going to be good. Everybody is looking, so everybody takes a terror for watching it move. It's going to have a going to roll its dice. It's got a 14 hit. It misses. And then it's going to fall back for three inches. Because that's what it does. It is our turn. We're going to activate Gabriel. The first thing Gabriel is going to do is get rid of this. And then what's he going to do? Do I try to get him out of here or do I hit him? Yeah, I'm going to move him three inches back here. And then I'm going to do the taking a breath and turn my back on the thing. So that's what he does. I'm going to go ahead and try to run back towards the other item that is going to cause a jump scare from the bushes. Seven. Strange Shadow character gains a terror point. Not really what I wanted. And I have to try not to fall. I still don't. Now we're going to do Chisaki. I'm going to run Chis Chisaki straight in. She has to not one or two. She's fine. All right, that's the end of that turn. We're running out of time to do this. 11. Automatically, one of these appears. Over there. Creature's turn, and he's gonna, it's going to roll 10 to come back at her. No problem. That's gonna cause, oh. That's only gonna cause to Shisaki, who's the only one watching, and I guess technically Sandy. It's gonna swing at Sandy, it needs a 14 to hit. It misses again, so, and then it's going to fall three back. It is our phase, and we have only two turns. I don't think we can achieve this. Item is way over here. I don't see how that can be got. So with that in mind, I'm going to move Shisaki first. Shisaki is going to go into combat with it. Shisaki's combat is ten. Two. That is a critical for that weapon. Uh, the katana... Crits on a one, two, or three. She should also be. She should also be ignoring her. Uh, the first terror she gets on a turn, so she actually has no terror on her. So she's going to do a critical damage to it. That we normally have done two. So it's four points of damage. Uh, in one hit, on the Windigo. I'm going to move Max. Max is with an inch. He can't pick it up. We cannot achieve this. And Max may fall. Fourteen. And Max does not fall, but he can't even pick it up till next turn. We we need two more turns uh, to, probably three more turns to do this. We wasted too much time trying to get over here to the corner. Let's go ahead and move Gabriel again. Lower his terror. And that would be the end of that turn. This is the final turn of the game, I think. Let's just check that. Make sure that I. I'm not wrong about that. I think it's a 12 turn. Yeah, it is a 12 turn game. So we can't we can't actually pull this off. But I'll go ahead and play the last round. So get one of these shows up on the well. We roll for direction. First one goes away, and the second one. Okay, that should have made the killer go away, but he's already on the table. So instead, he gets enraged. The marker goes away. The killer is going to go back in. This can move up to seven inches. It doesn't need that to attack Sandy. It needs a 14 to hit. Uh, that movement, by the way, added a, well, it would have been the first point, so it should cost Shisaki gets to ignore it. Uh, it is a hit. Another point, or does a point. Okay, so she's just gone insane. Sandy is gone. She would have taken a point for watching it. She already had a point on her. Uh, and then the hit gave her another one. So Engage comes off. Enraged comes off. Sandy is gone. She freaks out. Runs back off into the woods insane. And it 
is our go. Max comes, gets the third item. I'm gonna go ahead and move the well. She's gonna close in. She's gonna close in, swinging the guy again. That's a hit. It's gonna do two more points, and that's the end of the game. So I think, let me make sure I had to get back to the well. Objective. Characters need to finish the ritual and stop the well curse by successfully investigating all three points of interest tokens and carrying all the ritual items back into base-to-base -base contact with the well before the end of turn 12. So this is the end of turn 12. We have failed. Max just picked up the third ritual item way over here, opposite corner from the well. We got two of the items in. The third we did not get, so this is a failure. So we failed. We failed to meet the objective of the game. We were close. We got two of the three items into the well. Uh, there was no way we were going to make it with the third item, though. I fully admit, uh, I mean, it, originally it was some of the issues with the game. The creature kept pulling us back and forth, or the uh, jump scares kept pulling us back and forth with the uh, touch on the shoulder and keeping us away from the corner. And then I basically forgot that this was a race, that I had to get there uh, and get back in 12. Um, so if I had two more turns, I could have made it, but we don't have it. Uh, if, uh, if a solo game or cooperative game like this was easy and could always be achieved, there really wouldn't be a reason to play with the game. So the, um, I find that Don't Look Back is often right down to the wire. You just barely are making it out. So um, that can go either way. Sometimes you get victories, sometimes you don't. I do think I could have played a little better, which would have made this a victory, but there you have it. Our heroes, uh, with the loss of one, only one of them, failed to get the relics into the well. I enjoyed playing the game. It's, uh, I really do like playing Don't Look Back, and it's been a while. We do always pull it out in the game club uh, this time of year, or always, like, it's been, like the game has been out that long. But it has become our custom. It is a very fun, very easy game to play. Uh, we could have spent more time searching for items. I kind of neglected that part of the rule at all. We didn't search for things which would have maybe given us weapons and things to help us with the uh, goal. But again, this was really a race and we really failed it because we lost track of that race. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. If you have any questions or you play Don't Look Back yourself and would like to add your own comments about your opinions of this game or this scenario, please put those in the comment section down below. We also look to those comments for any further ideas for other content we might produce here on Cry Havoc Wargaming. If you've enjoyed the video, I hope that you will hit like, and if you'd like to continue to receive notification for videos like this one that may help you better determine how to spend your money or time and your tabletop wargaming hobby, then I hope you will hit subscribe, entering our notification bell. Till next time, cheers.